Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com. Welcome to the headphone show. And today I'm gonna to give my first impressions of the Sonoma Model 1. Now this is not a normal headphone. This is an electrostatic headphone, uh, meaning it's not like typical dynamic driver or planar magnetic headphones. Uh, it requires its own energizer system. And the Sonoma Model 1 actually comes with one as well. It's also got a unique way of getting the tuning to be the way that it is. And we'll talk about that. Uh, but first, let me just go over you know the basics here uh, with the build design and comfort. Just so you guys are aware, this is a demo unit sent over by Warwick Acoustics for evaluation. Those are the guys who make this, uh, but I've not been paid to say anything in particular about it. For anyone wondering, this whole system together costs around $5,000. So it is a prohibitively expensive headphone system. The first thing that I have to mention is that, yes, you do get extension to the arms, which is nice. It's a little stiff and there's a little bit of cup swivel, but unfortunately there's an intense clamp going on. This is really, really not comfortable initially. Just so you guys can see, this is what it looks like when I'm wearing it, okay? Um, but the problem with this is that the clamp force is so intense that I immediately wanted to take it off. Now I know what some of you guys might be thinking, can you improve the clamp force, lessen the clamp force by bending the headband? And the answer is thankfully, yes you can, but unfortunately, no matter what I do, I was unable to get this to be comfortable. Uh, the, I think from my head, it's just the clamp is just a little too tight. I've got a slightly larger than average head. And also keep in mind that I've only had a chance to listen to this for the past, you know, four days or so. So, you know, it might be the case that over time, this clamp force would lessen or again, if you put it, you know, similar to what you do with the Sennheiser HD 650 series or 600 series, you know, if you put it, you know, around a stack of books or something like that, maybe it would lessen over time. But for me, so far, the comfort hasn't really been improved all that much, uh, even though, yeah, I'm aware you can do this and you can... You know, stretch out the headband a bit, but uh, it just hasn't hasn't done so yet for me. Thankfully, the pads are huge. I have no problems, you know, fitting my whole ear inside, and they're not round as well. They're oval shaped, which is really nice. Also, it might look like there's a lot of plastic going on here, but this actually feels really sturdy and durable, which is quite nice. Uh, you know, this doesn't feel like rickety plastic or anything like it's going to fall apart. This feels quite sturdy. And it just goes to show that plastic doesn't necessarily mean that the build quality is poor. It also means that, you know, it can be quite a bit lighter than if you're using other materials. So uh, definitely a good job as far as the build quality is concerned. Now, how does the Sonoma Model 1 sound? Well, I'm a little bit conflicted about this actually because there are a number of things that this does extremely well. For starters, the detail retrieval on this thing is outstanding. Like it, it is spectacularly good. Uh, you know, you hear things again in your music that you didn't even realize were there. It has this sort of ability to give you like all of the textural quality for, you know, when you hear like a cello bow going across the string. That kind of stuff comes through in ways that, you know, while it might be there in other headphones, it, it, it comes through in a more clear way uh, with something like this. So it is a fantastic headphone for detail retrieval. And also the frequency response with the Sonoma Model 1 is really, really good. It's actually nearly perfect. And this is actually not something I can say for many of the, you know, super high-end headphones. You know, the frequency response for many of them tends to be, you know, sacrificed in favor of some of the technical performance that you get. And with this one is not, it's actually really, really good. Um, so if you're looking at, you know, the Harman target here, which is the consumer preference curve, the Sonoma Model 1 matches it almost perfectly. It's a little bit relaxed there in the sub bass, um, but it is still well extended there. And then everything else um, is pretty much where you'd want it to be. The one concern that I have with this is that around 10K, it's just a little bit hot there, meaning that there's just a little bit of a shimmery kind of character that comes through. Uh, and with this, it's not that bad because the balance is still there where the rest of the treble energy is, the 10K bump that you get with this, it doesn't throw anything out of balance. It's just that, I, you know, for me, that's what I would you know, reduce a little bit. But for the most part, the frequency response here, like I mentioned, is fantastic. And I was actually curious as to how they were able to achieve the frequency response that they did because it is so good. And it turns out that the reason for that is they actually use a DSP in the DAC amp unit that you get with this. And so what I mean by that is essentially they've done the equivalent of EQ. They've just done digital signal processing in the in the unit itself. Uh, and this is something that I think needs to be applauded. And I really hope that more companies do this kind of thing because, you know, they're able to achieve a frequency response that I can't imagine they would have been able to achieve otherwise. And it's just a really uh, smart way of doing this, I think. That leads me into what's maybe not quite so good about this headphone. And the main problem with this is that 
it doesn't really have much going on for dynamics, uh, meaning that it doesn't have that sort of fun, engaging quality that I really, really like about headphones like the Focal Utopia or the LCD4 or, you know, even the Focal Clear or the Hi-Fi Mensa's Vara. Uh, you know, there's a lot of headphones out there that have better dynamics than this at around this price or less. And so I kind of think that that's one of the aspects that's missing on this a little bit, even though it's clearly very fast, like everything is an immediate sounding, like super tight, well-controlled and snappy, you know, even for bass tones, but it just doesn't feel as punchy and as impactful as, again, the Focal Utopia, which is a less expensive headphone. Um, again, you don't get an amplifier with that, so maybe that's the maybe that's where some of the value comes in, but I don't, this is not something where I think, you know, value is of utmost concern. Um, the other thing that this doesn't really do all that well, in my opinion, is the sense of soundstage. And it's, it's weird. The soundstage, it's not that it's bad across the board. It's just really weird to me. Um, left and right is really well defined on this. And it actually goes reasonably far, not super spacious, but like better than average. But then the center image just isn't with this headphone. So when you hear a pan going from right to left, yeah, I did that right, it feels as if it goes through your head. And if you compare that to like the imaging and the presentation that you get on something like even a Hi-Fi Man Aria, it's much more spread out in front of you and it has all this depth and layering and stuff like that, that this just, it doesn't have it. Um, this has a more similar presentation to something like a HD 650 or something like that, um, or 600. To my ear, the Focal Utopia isn't really that much better as far as soundstage is concerned, but with that headphone, the, the image distribution is just a little bit more even in front of me. Um, whereas with this one, it just, it's really strange um, as far as how the, how things, you know, pan from one side to the other. So maybe to better describe that, it's not like this is a closed in kind of stage, it's just a more disjointed kind of stage where the imaging just isn't as even for the, for the center image as it is for the lateral definition, um, which some people may not be bothered by, but I found that to be quite odd on this. And additionally, while this has shockingly good detail retrieval, it's, uh, the, the in instrument separation isn't quite as good as similarly priced planar magnetic headphones that I've heard. And with really good planar magnetic headphones, you can isolate all the individual instruments and listen to every single in instrument line, even within busy passages, it, it holds it all together. And often I find with dynamic driver headphones, while for individual instrument lines, they end up being quite detailed, you know, the high-end stuff, even the Focal Utopia is kind of like this. Um, as soon as there's a lot of stuff going on in the mix, stuff tends to blend together a little bit. So where I find this, I find it's right in between, you know, a dynamic driver headphone like the Focal Utopia and, you know, something like an LCD4 as far as instrument separation is concerned. And I actually found that when I turn the volume up on this, that's where it starts to lose it a little bit. Um, whereas if the volume's a little bit lower, it's not actually that much of an issue. It's, it's actually almost like a planar in that sense. Um, so I think it really depends on how loud you listen <laughs> with this headphone. And I also think in part whether or not you're going to enjoy this is going to come down to the genres that you like to listen to. So even though this tuning is very close to the Harman target, I actually think that this is better for uh, acoustic music, jazz music, classical music. And I don't think it's quite as good for more upbeat modern genres or anything, you know, that has a really intense uh, punchy bass line. Uh, it just, it just doesn't handle it quite as well on this. So uh, yeah, if you're listening to classical music and acoustic music, jazz music and that kind of stuff, yeah, this absolutely does get a recommendation, but I suggest, you know, listening to it if you have an opportunity. Uh, I don't know about blind buying this because it, I think these days there are enough other options out there where, you know, at $5,000, would you rather have this or Utopia? And part of me thinks that the Utopia is actually the more fun headphone to listen to. And $5,000 really isn't that far from a Hi-Fi Man Vara, which in my opinion is also better than this for detail retrieval. So it fits in a little bit of an awkward spot there as far as its pricing is concerned. You know, I like to make the joke that uh, certain headphones are better for serious audiophile music only. Uh, than others, and I think this is definitely one of them. This is a headphone that for those genres is gonna do quite well, in part because it does two of the things that many people consider to be the most important qualities for overall enjoyment in headphone listening really, really well, and that's uh, detail retrieval and frequency response, because for those two aspects of sound quality, the Sonoma Model 1 absolutely nails it. But if you're somebody who wants a more punchy and dynamic and impactful sounding headphone, then I don't think this is going to be the one for you. In any case, that does it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.